I would like to go through the moment of inertia calculation using the integral method. Now again, when we have a moment of inertia, we are using the area moment of inertia. And in this case, we're going to use a rectangular cross section. So we have a rectangle, we have a base, we have the height of the rectangle, and the, the coordinate axes, we can, we can arbitrarily assign our coordinate axes. And in this case, I'm going to assign it directly through the centroid or the center of our object. So we need to remember our equations for our moment of inertia or our second moment of area. So Ix, the moment of inertia about the x-axis, is equal to the integral of y squared dA. And y, y, or the moment of inertia about the y-axis, is going to be equal to the integral of x squared dA. Again, we need to go through and calculate up our dA. Let's go over Ix first. <clears throat> now, when we use Ix, we're going to be having a value of y. So we need to have a y value in here going up to our dA. So in that case, we're going to select an area that is going to be horizontal like this. So this is going to be our dA, and it is going to have a height of uh, dy. The height of that is going to be dy. And it goes the entire width of the object, and then we are going to go from the x-axis up to it, and that is going to be our y distance, our y distance. So now that we have this set up, we can look at our uh, integration. Now, a couple things that we need to look at. One is we need to get our limits of integration. Since our x-axis is in the middle, we need to go and look at what is this point and this point. Well, up here, this is half, so this is going to be h divided by 2. And down here, this is going to be minus h divided by 2. So we have to go from minus h over 2 to h over 2 for our limits of integration in the y direction. So let's go through this. Ix is going to be equal to the integral limits of integration minus h over 2 to h over 2 y squared, our y squared term. So we have y squared. And then we have our dA. Oh, we didn't calculate our dA yet. So let's calculate our dA. dA is going to be equal to the width times the height. Well, the width of this is going to be b, b, and our height is dy. So this is going to be b, d, y. That is our dA. So now we can write this in here. So we have b, d, y. So our dA term. So now in this case, what we can do is now we can start rearranging this, start working this. This is, the b is a constant, so we can pull that out. b integral minus h over 2 to h over 2 of y squared dy. Now we just have to perform this integration. So in this case, the integration is going to be equal to b, or is our constant, and the integral here is y squared goes to y cubed divided by 3, and we are going to evaluate that from minus h over 2 to h over 2. So in this case, we're going to pull our b out. See if I can fit this in here. So y cubed, h over 2 goes in here. So we have h over 2 cubed divided by 3 minus we have a negative h over 2 cubed divided by 3. So now we put those in there, and now we just continue to simplify this down. So we've got uh, h over 2, so we've got our b, h cubed divided by 2 cubed, which is 8. 8 times 3 gives us our 24, so that's going to be 24 in the denominator here. Then we have a minus, and we have h cubed, or negative h cubed, uh, over uh, 2 cubed, which is going to be a negative h cubed over 24 here. So now pot negative, negative, those makes a positive. So now we're going to have b times 2 h cubed over 24 
or in this case, the two cancels to 24, and we get 12 in the denominator, or we get our IX is equal to BH cubed over 12. And that is our answer for how we calculate up the uh, moment of inertia about the x-axis for a rectangular cross-section. Now, let me point out here uh, how we would go about setting this up for IY. Now, in this case, uh, a little bit different than the centroid because when we do the IY, we're looking at an X distance. So, in that case, we need to look in this direction, our areas or our moments of, uh, I'm sorry, the limits of integration where we're going to integrate about the X axis here. So, what we're going to do is we're going to change our area. Our area is now going to be, or our DA is now going to be vertical. So this is going to be our DA. It has a width of DX and then it has a distance. Actually, I probably should have put this in the positive axis, but basically we're going to have a distance X to our DA. And in this case, once we do this, uh, then we can set up our integral. And I'm just going to put it right down here. So when we do our integral, we're going to have integral from uh, negative B over 2 that'd be here, negative b over 2 to b, oops, make that a lowercase, b over 2. So we can, limits of integration, x squared, x squared, and then again, we need to look at our dA. So our dA here, uh, I will put this right here. So dA in this case is going to be equal to the width, which is dx, times the height, which is h, so it's h dx. So in this case, we have h dx. And if we take a look at this and we take a look at that, it's very similar. It's uh, just that we have a couple different variables in there, but we're going to end up with exactly the same equation, except our b and our h are going to be flipped around here. But we would set it up slightly different the way we would do the integration. So again, the integral method for solving for a moment of inertia uh, <clears throat> using the integral method.